Hi, Prasad, let's take a look at this new set of essays. Uh, just one thing I want you to keep in mind is that it's best to wait to get corrections back from us before you actually send us a, a new set of essays. Uh, one of the reasons is it's important to get feedback so that you can use that feedback to help improve your um, following sets of essays, all right? So just keep that in mind as you progress in the course, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this one about online communication. Let's see what you had to say. The advent of technology has helped the modes of communication effectively with less effort. However, it is minimizing the personal, personal interaction among the peers and even creating gaps in communication. In my opinion, though there are several benefits with virtual meetings, there are more demits which have shown negative effect in meetings. Okay. So um, you're definitely trying to change around the language of the prompt. You're trying to use it. Um, you're trying to rephrase it and use your own words. And so that's good. But what has happened here in this particular introduction is that we've lost some of the meaning. It's not really a faithful reproduction of this or a, a successful rephrasing because this this whole section here, these two sentences, they really don't uh, rephrase the topic. It's nothing about the workplace. It's nothing about meetings. It's nothing about um, online versus in person. So all of that, and those are the key words here in this essay, uh, all that is missing. All right, you're talking about technology, communication, less effort minimizing personal interaction. So it's really very unclear to us what you're talking about. Okay. Um, so I think that with some pretty minor changes, you could have changed this around to make it say what you actually needed it to say and what you wanted it to say. So with the advent of, well, what kind of technology, uh, Digital communication tech, the advent of digital communication technology has helped our workplaces um, conduct meetings with less effort. However, uh, this is minimizing the personal interaction among peers and even creating gaps in communication. So, I mean, you still could have changed it more. But I think that even just a change like this makes it more successful and more of a representation of what this is actually about. Like I said, I probably, if I were to write it, I probably would have changed it a little more. But I just want you to get the point. All right, so um, careful here. The word is demerits. You're missing a syllable, so be careful with that. And there are more demerits which have shown negative effects, S and meeting. Okay? Let's go on to your body paragraphs now. Virtual meetings enable every individual to connect from any location without attending office. Well, careful. You don't attend office. It's not like you attend, I don't know, a service or you attend, uh, it, it's just the wrong word here. So uh, without uh, appearing at the office, without being present at the office, uh, without visiting an office. So any one of these would have been, um, okay. This is because the, here you need a the, internet is available everywhere to everyone and hence it helps to get connect to meetings instantly. Let's fix that. This is because the internet is available everywhere to everyone and hence it helps to get connected to meetings instantly. For example, Skype and WebEx are the popular applications which are widely known as business specific platforms. This software, we don't usually use software in the plural, uh, or you could have said these platforms or uh, these applications, but not these softwares. So these platforms provide, no S, live streaming of audio and video output to all the users without time lag. Furthermore, employees residing overseas, get rid of the, AT, the at, 
can attend the meetings without traveling to the workplace. Also, clients on the other on other clients in other countries can be easily contacted with these electronic media. Hence, it makes one's life easier as a person does not necessarily have to be have to be physically present in the meeting room. Okay, so here you're telling us about the positives. Let's see. Let me just take a look at this one more time for uh, task achievement. All right, so I'm like I said, I just wanted to read this again for task achievement. You told us here that there were several benefits. Um, it seems to me that there's really just one benefit that you're really talking about. Um, maybe, I guess there's two. You're saying that you can have a meeting anywhere at any time. And then uh, you're saying that it's instantaneous. So not only can you have a meeting anywhere at any time, but... Um, you know, it's like this instant kind of gratification. So, yeah, I was kind of shaky on this one. I don't really see this as being particularly a different main idea than what you have a little further down. Um, okay, so this is the advantages of online communication. Uh, I do have a question about this, but I want to read your next paragraph before I go into what my question is. So let's do that first. Despite merits, there are several, you keep writing demits, demerits of using online communication because these meetings lack, no of, individuals, S apostrophe, expressions, and their opinion. Face-to-face -face meetings make, no S here, individuals interact, no, t, no two, with each other and can instantly fix the gaps if there are any, you're missing a word, in discussion. However, it is possible in vir virtual meetings as one should follow etiquette of the meeting without interrupting others. For instance, a speaker's opinion cannot be comprehended without follow-up questions, and hence there are minimal chances of clarification on the discussion. Now, okay, you did something in this paragraph that I like. You talked about face-to-face -face meetings, comparing them with online meetings, and so I liked this. I thought that was effective, and I thought that was really what you should be doing here. Uh, however, I really feel like there was more development that this needed. It felt like there was more to say and that it needed to be wrapped up maybe a little better. Maybe even if you had something as simple as like a conclusion statement here at the end of the paragraph, it would have uh, worked a little better. But I definitely feel like there was more, more to develop in this paragraph, okay? All right, so to summarize, it is undeniable that online channels of communication have, because your noun is channels, have made business communication easier. These are, no, these still lack personal, these are still in lack of, that doesn't, no. These still lack personal arguments and discussions. I, I don't understand that. What does it mean that these meetings lack personal arguments? I don't really understand that. Hence, the disadvantages, not way more, but outweigh the advantages. That's the right word. So, yeah, I mean, there's some areas of, of awkwardness, some, you know, grammatical things, lexical things that are happening here. Um, it's, you know, it's got some good elements to it, but there are some areas that I want you to work on as well. Um yeah, I mean, it was it was a good attempt. It was a good attempt. Uh, you're you're on the right track, but let's try to pull everything together, okay? Uh, let me take a look at your other task. Okay, so you want to apply to this job. Let's see what you wrote uh, to your manager. Okay, dear sir, I'm writing this letter to express my interest with regards to a full-time job posting on senior engineer. I am a part-time employee working as a senior designer in assembly section with five years of experience in your organization. After I had gone through the job description, I feel I am the best fit for that position. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I want to discuss here. I want to make sure you understand the, the task. So let's look at it one more time. 
It says write a letter to your manager. So this is your, your supervisor, the person who you report to. I thought it was strange that you decided to refer to that manager as dear sir. You see, in this kind of instance, um, a letter to your manager would most likely be a semi-formal letter. Maybe you might want to make it formal, but um, the, the tone is usually semi-formal. And certainly you would refer to the person by his name. So dear Mr. Jones, dear Mrs. Smith, dear whoever. Um, but it would have made sense to refer to the person by name because you work together. And then, of course, if you had used the name, you wouldn't have written yours faithfully. You would have written yours sincerely. Okay, so um, I think this was fine. I want to read it again. I wanted to correct some of the grammar here. I'm writing this letter to express my interest with regard to a full-time position posting. Uh, no, with regard to the full-time posting for a senior engineer. I am a part-time employee working as a senior designer in assembly in the assembly section with five years of experience in your organization. Um, I thought this sentence was a little strange after I had gone through the job description. Um, based on the job description, I feel I am the best fit for that position. That was a much better way of saying it. You didn't need the past perfect here. Grammatically, you would have wanted uh, the past simple, if anything, but I didn't really care for this construction, so um, I think based on the job description works a lot better. Okay, uh, let's move on. I have been associated with your organization for a long time, and I have acquired critical skills during my tenure. Furthermore, I have had an opportunity to work at industry partners and had a great reputation among business partners. All right, let's try that again. I have had an opportunity to work uh, with industry partners and have a great reputation among business partners. Uh, okay, I think the one thing I want to change here is, other than what I just did, was your repeated use of the word partners here. You could have said associates, maybe, business associates rather than partners, but definitely you want to change up your vocabulary a little bit so you're not repeating the same words. I am planning to progress in my career and ready to take challenges in, in, I think, the design area. And for this, I have recently completed certification. Fortunately, the job description in our employment portal has the same skills that I possess, and I feel that is a great opportunity to reach a next level. Mm. I feel that this is a great opportunity to reach the next level in my career. Also, as I am an existing employee who knows the ins and outs of your company, it would be an added advantage if I get hired for both the company and me, full stop. I, hereby, I am hereby attaching my recent resume and I request... Hmm. I am hereby attaching my recent resume and I request you consider my profile for this role. Full stop here. Okay. So um, as you can see, the last paragraph had a number of grammatical mistakes that were pretty consistent. I had to correct quite a bit of them. So be aware of that. Be um, cautious with your grammar. Make sure you understand the grammar rules behind um, the corrected suggestions, okay? Um, so that pretty much brings us to the end of this. I want you to work on that um, grammar for sure. Um, and then some of just those more nuanced things that include vocabulary as well. Uh, something to work on also. Okay, so go ahead and work on that and we'll wait for your next set of essays. Good luck.